All right, welcome back everyone. We're picking up exactly where we left off in the last video, where we created a block out of the torso and limbs of the stylized character. And we are working from this concept again of the stylized hammer boy. And a couple things that I should have brought up in the first tutorial was I'm working with this display HUD here. And if you were curious how to create that or add that, you can simply go to the menu up top, display, heads up display, and then you can enable poly count. I highly encourage that you always work with this on so you can keep track of your polygon count in case you're working towards a budget. So again, display, heads up display, poly count, and you can add really a bunch more uh, settings to your heads up display. But for the most part, we're just going to be working with poly count here. All right. So here we have the torso blocked in with some limbs extruded and you can see that it looks a little bit weird because we have the torso with most of the edges softened and then we have the limbs kind of this hard faceted look and you want to pick one and kind of work with it going forward uh, it's completely preference i like to typically work with hardened edge so we'll just set these all set these faces to hardened edge in order to do that select the mesh go to mesh display and go to hardened edge or again you can simply hold shift right click and soften hardened edge and then you can do the opposite so here i set it to a certain angle but we can kind of set it to completely harden there like that or again i can set it to completely soften edge right uh, again i typically like to work with all the edges hardened so you can entirely pick which one that you want and move forward with that all right so one thing that always comes up is especially when first learning how to model is sometimes extruding from the torso and extruding from a mesh and dealing with vertices and moving vertices like I did with the last in the last tutorial can be daunting. And there's a I would say probably a more you know simple or primitive way to uh, approach adding extremities, limbs, and hands and whatnot. And that's to start with primitives. All right. So how are we going to do that? Let's first go ahead and just remove this arm. Okay. If you're happy with what you got. You know what go ahead and keep it and jump to the next portion or you can watch how i kind of quickly very quickly rebuild the arm using a primitive so i'm going to hold right click select face and we're going to select these faces basically right up to here where i start where i started to extrude the shoulder out maybe i'm going to increase this selection by one now a nice quick way to do that if you have a set of face selections is hold shift and then press the period OK, and if you press the comma, it'll shrink your selection and period will increase it again. Holding shift, press period to increase or shift to, de to decrease. So I can kind of select this again and press shift period. And I've got that. And instead of, instead of outright deleting it, what I want to do again is hold shift, right click. And let's just simply extract the faces. Now, extracting the faces is going to allow me to pull off the faces off the original mesh and create a separate object. We can see in the outliner now we have a third face here and you can see that we have both arms extruded out. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do before hiding these guys is I'm going to jump to the channel box and take a look at something called history. In Maya, we're going to start getting a lot of these nodes, especially when you start combining, extracting, duplicating faces or duplicating meshes. You're just going to build up a lot of history. And the best way to manage that and keep track of that is just to always kind of delete history. Sometimes it's nice, but most of the time, you know, history has its use cases. I won't get into that now, but uh, just know it serves a purpose but for now we're going to straight up delete it okay so select your meshes here all three and if you go to the poly modeling tab you have this icon right here it's this blue one in the middle with kind of the uh the clock and x that simply means delete history and if you were wondering where to find that in the menus you can go up to here where it's uh edit delete by type and history and you can see that it's alt shift d so if you hit alt shift d you can go ahead and just delete history now be very very careful that you don't go delete all by type because sometimes we only want to delete mesh history or delete history on a specific mesh we don't want to delete this where 
it'll completely ruin your mesh if you're rigging uh skinning or morph targets anything like that okay so just keep in mind we can go ahead and delete history and now we can continue to move forward all right so i'm going to again select the limbs that i uh, that i had created initially and i'm going to simply hit Control h and hide those meshes all right so now i've essentially just completely removed the arms from our mesh and now i'm going to create them simply with another primitive so let's go ahead now and create a cylinder now in order to do that just hold shift and actually without a mesh selected press shift right click and then select cylinder so what the cylinder created let's go ahead and kind of move it in position i'm going to use my front and side views here and go ahead and move that up in the side view and let's just go ahead and increase the st size the radius to start all right so middle if you select the word radius and middle mouse drag that'll kind of increase the overall radius and let's rotate this 90 degrees and just kind of keep moving this up a little bit and I'm going to just jump to the side view and kind of get it roughly in position. Now, obviously, because we're looking down the length of the arm, we don't have a, a side view of the arm, which is completely fine. Uh, we also don't have a top view, which is completely fine. Again, this reference is really just going to help us kind of get the overall um, form of the character. And then we'll just kind of use the, the rest of the 3D shapes, the 3D views to build these shapes. So I'm also going to increase the height a bit so we can kind of see this uh, a little bit more. And I want to quickly jump over back to our pure ref reference and take a look at some more uh, reference that we have here. Again, our, the arm of a character, right? And I'm making sure to base this off of kind of a stylized character, but he still has human anatomical proportions he's not so stylized that we can give him noodle arms and just say well it's just part of the concept right you can see that it has a good base anatomical uh you know based off of anatomical reference okay and even though this is an obviously an adult male all of this still applies to uh, adolescents and child uh, proportions so again if we're taking a look here we're looking at the cross sections of the arm it's not a straight circle, okay? We're gonna kind of have more of this, like if the palm's facing up here or facing out to the side, you can see the angle of the bicep and the same thing with the forearm, all right? I really like this example of this chain link. Again, Anatomy for Sculptors does a fantastic job of really breaking down the, the human form, the complex human form into nice, simple, primitive shapes. So we're going to be modeling this, our character, with his arms out and palms kind of facing down, like, like we see here, right? So that's going to be the uh, initial approach here. So with that in mind, that means his bicep is going to be is facing forward instead of facing up, right? So again, palms facing down, biceps are going to be facing uh, towards the camera here. And we can go ahead and start building off of that reference. Now, one of the things that I liked about the display HUD is that it always kind of gives you this nice display here of poly count, tries, vertices, and edges. You can, of course, view that here in the modeling toolkit, right? And I do just like this on the HUD because it always stays up. So why is that important? Well, let's click quickly jump to the channel box editor and select the base mesh and I'm gonna to go to edge mode here, hold right click, drag to edge mode, and take a look at that. We have, it says 16 edges. Now, keep in mind, this is based off of here, right? Again, I'm looking at this number here, edges, 16. And now because we have symmetry enabled, this is uh, clearly half of the edges, so that's eight edges. So you wanna be very careful on this next step. Don't just start building the arm with eight or 16 20 edges in the subdivision axis without seeing what you actually have to connect to right if you create this with the same amount of subdivisions that we have to attach this to the arm to the torso that's most of the work all right you don't have to worry about then adding more edges to the torso or removing edges from the bicep or the arm right everything is is going to match up uh, the way that it should so again we have 16 edges eight 
on each side. So I'm going to select our cylinder here and go ahead and just simply set this to eight. Perfect. Now, again, because we have the palms facing down and the biceps facing forward, and we're keeping this shape in mind here, as we're going along, we want to, instead of make this a cylinder, just kind of already right off the bat, scale this down, okay? So if I press the R key and jump to my scale tool, I can now kind of scale this down in the X, because I rotate it 90 degrees. Remember, I rotated about 90. And let's just kind of then uniformly scale it back up so we kind of retain that original volume. All right, great. So we're we're here. This is this looks pretty good. I'm just going to move this out. And then let's just go ahead and continue to extrude. So I'm going to jump to my front view, hold spacebar now, and I'm going to select these faces here. Now, if you click drag select from the front front view, you can see that it'll select all of the faces here and all we want are these. Well, if you just marquee select, just left click drag select, and then control while you're doing the same thing, that'll deselect faces, right? So again, you can hold shift or control shift to add face selections or control to remove face selections. So again, click and hold drag and then control drag and then that removes faces. Great. So I can hold shift and let's go ahead and just start extruding. Okay. And I'm going to extrude that and we're going to scale this down. Now, this is essentially where our elbow is uh, is going to be. OK, so if we take a look again at our reference, you can see right about the right about where that elbow gets where you extrude out from it. It's it starts to fan out again. So it scales in. It kind of tapers in and then scales back out for all those muscles that are kind of coming from the forearm. So we're going to apply that here. All right, and then you can even hold your own arm out, which is what I'm doing right now. Put your palms down and you can see how your bicep is sticking out and now your forearm, right, is gonna be also at an angle. So I'm gonna hold, uh, hold shift and let's go ahead and continue to extrude. And we're gonna take this all the way kind of down here and we're going to move it down in position at an angle. Now, the one thing I do want to do from the top view or even perspective might be better is just kind of angle this forward, right? So we're going to give essentially a nice slight bend to our uh, to the arm. OK, and we can see we can now just start selecting, double clicking these edges, kind of moving these into position. And I already have some good form here. I can scale this down for the really start getting that for the wrist. And if I want to now add that volume here again, jumping to the reference, you can see how much uh, that's kind of scaled out right from the elbow. We're going to add some volume back there. All right. So let's hold shift and then go to our multi cut tool now. And I'm going to hold control. And you can see I'm going to add it right a, a bit after the elbow and then double click those edges, hold W, and I'm gonna just, again, you can scale with R, or W, and m control middle mouse drag. There, so that's gonna, again, add some nice volume, and we can already see we're getting some good form and good shape uh, into our character here. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is the angle, right? Be depending on how the hand is uh, pronated, and rotated depends on how you actually would rotate this and attach to the hand. For the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it, we're just going to attach it directly to the hand because it's going to, it's just going to kind of help simplify some things. All right. So just keep that in mind kind of as an asterisk. As you create more realistic characters, you would want to model that uh, rotation in. But for now, we're, uh, we're good, right? You can see it right here, kind of from the bicep and then going to essentially that, uh, the inside of the thumb. All right. Anyway, so we're going to kind of move back here and we can see that we're going to just now again, just flatten out this underneath the, the arm, right? Bicep. You can see that it's a, starting to get a bit bulbous and we want this nice, again, flat on the tops of the biceps here and coming out on the sides here. 
All right, good. So, so, so far so good. We can see that we're still kind of attaching to the original volume. And now that we have that, we can attach this back to the arm and you can see that we're clearly missing the shoulder. Well, the geometry we're about to add is the shoulder, okay? So if I jump back to perspective, select these faces, let's jump to face mode. Remember, hold tab and just kind of click drag and we can just select those with precision. Delete those faces. And now we're going to double click those edges, shift, move to edge copy them, and then scale these out just so we can more easily attach them to the arm. All right, so let's go ahead now a little bit more, just scale these out and kind of move these up into position. And you can see we, we're starting to build that shoulder. And I'm gonna just kind of move these vertices already into position. And if you want, right, the shoulder, referring to our reference here, right? You can see how far the shoulder goes down, you know, a good fraction, almost maybe a third of the way or uh, like maybe a sixth of the way, fifth of the way down the shoulder. We can just hold hold this vertice and kind of move this down to add that, uh, that detail there. Now, again, we're not going for something 100% anatomical uh, or 100, you know, all the muscles kind of detailed in, we're just going for form and proportion, all right? So now we're gonna use another technique that we haven't used, and don't worry, we're gonna snap these back here, is we're gonna, just like I said, vertex snap. So press W, select the vertex now, and then press V, holding the letter V. Take a look at what happens up here. These are our snaps in Maya, and depending on what you have enabled, I can press C for curve, or, at, or V for grid, and then that will allow us to snap it to the vertex, okay? And holding V, there. It's allowing us to snap now to the vertex of our character. So I'm gonna just select all of the vertices of the arm that we just created and snap that into the character. And that'll make welding a lot easier once we reattach this arm back to the character. Okay, just make sure we kind of have that selected there. All right, great, so far so good. And what I will do now, is you can see we have this cylinder created and just we just want to spend a little bit of time now making sure that it looks, uh, it looks good. Okay, so with this kind of attached, what I'm going to do is duplicate the arm, Control D, and transform it over to the other side. So when we combine it back to the character, we'll have it on both sides here. So I will now hit Control G. Now the reason I hit Control G is because it will create a group empty node and set the pivot at the origin. So you can see that the pivot now is right here. Before, right, if you're not seeing this, hit W on your key, then hit Control G, and then now our pivot's here. So I can simply scale this now in the negative x and, and the x by negative one. And then there you go. It's gonna go ahead and create the arm of the character, the right arm of the character, and by simply duplicating and mirroring it. So I can now select one, two, three, okay? And then hold shift and combine. So I just selected the three objects and then we've combined this together and we have kind of now a mess of these nodes and history that I was talking about. So just go ahead up here and hit delete history. Boom, everything kind of cleaned up really nicely. And you can even middle mouse drag this back into this cube group and we can start continuing to build the character. So if I go ahead now and select the vertice, you can see that I now have the symmetry working again. All right, so that is how you quickly create a, a limb and, but with a primitive and reattach it to the body, all right? So now that I did that though, we have to make sure, oops, right? We didn't weld the vertices, right? We just snapped them together. So what you can do is marquee select the area. It really doesn't matter. You can select kind of this whole area here because we're about to weld it with a th small threshold. 
We're in vertex mode, so hold shift, right click, merge vertices, and merge vertices. And it gives you a distance threshold. Now, depending on the scale of your model and everything, this is going to be a fairly small value. Just make sure it's not anything too big, right? Like, I think 0.1, we're still good, honestly. But if you're not paying attention, you know, like, you can see what starts to happen, right? It really starts to really weld some things in and maybe something a little bit less drastic, right? So distance threshold of two, right? I typically use a very, very small value, 0 0.003, because we snapped it, right? So take a look now, I hit Q to exit the tool and hit three on the keyboard and boom, it's all merged together. So if I undo that, take a look at the what, what happens, right? You see that now? That is an open face here. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you can tell in the smoothing. Um, so that's kind of a good tell uh, that you have uh, open faces there. So again, I'm just going to quickly uh, go ahead and merge vertices, merge vertices, and set it to 0.003. And there we go. We're all ready to go. So and now that we have the arm reattached, let's just go ahead and kind of clean up the, the chest and arm area a bit, right? So you can see we kind of have this shoulder and... We can see this uh, chest and it's it's looking pretty good, but I really want to just kind of bring this out a bit. Uh, so if we go back to our reference here, you can kind of see how the chest kind of comes in and then angles back. Um, and it's going to be a bit le less exaggerated for a young adolescent male, but we can kind of use that as our, uh, as our guide, right? So maybe bring this out just a little bit and this is going to come back here. And we're just going to control middle mouse move this, right? And again, we want to make sure that, yep, we have symmetry on. Control Y to kind of redo that. And we're just kind of moving some things back. And this vertice is out just a bit too much. You can just see how we're kind of pushing and pulling some verts and middle mouse dragging and just kind of getting things nicely uh, aligned. All right. And again, you can see we're missing this volume here for the deltoid or the shoulder. So I'm going to move this forward um, again, just to kind of add some some detail back. All right. So just kind of moving some verts around and all in all, it's looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, so that's not too bad. If I hit three, just kind of quickly preview, um, we can see that it's looking okay. And we can see something happened here with our symmetry. Uh, it didn't weld. So it looks like the weld function only worked um, on one side. And don't worry, it's not too big of a deal. All we simply need to do is kind of re- uh, create or remirror our character. So the nice thing is we simply have this edge that runs all the way down and hold shift, uh, right click. And what we're going to do is detach components. And what detach component does now is it essentially says, well, I'm going to break this edge off and separate it out. Now, keep in mind, sometimes you might think my acting a little bit weird, but it's just doing what you want. I'm going to set symmetry off. There we go. So now I can select this side and delete it. And I'm going to delete this other arm. All right. So I'm going to go back, make sure that if I look back at my line of symmetry, everything is kind of nice and even, which it is. Let's say it wasn't. Let's say we had some verts here and here. Well, simply select them down the axes and scale them in one axis, just like we did previously. And boom. And then now you can, just like we did before, instead of Z, where it'll snap it to a vertex, hold X, right? No, nope, X doesn't want to work. So just use this grid snap over here, snap to grids, okay? And you can snap that to the grid. You can see how it's snapping. And I'm snapping it to the thick line in the middle, which is the origin, all right? So far, so good. And let's disable that grid snapping. And now we're going to just jump back, select the mesh, and you can either, again, go up here to mesh mirror or hold shift and do shift right click and do a mirror. But this time I'm going to open up the dialog box and I want to make sure I mirror in the X with a ne negative X and axis world. That's good. 
good and make sure to set do not set automatic that always kind of looks like it's okay but it, it doesn't do a good job and it's just a little bit off at least in my experience so i do custom 0.03 and then that makes sure that it's right there down the middle uh, and we're good to go so a nice simple mirror and you can see that everything is reattached and we can even we should be able to go back to world x and now start working uh, and moving this object so or moving these objects okay so we went ahead now and added in the arm which is great um, oops we can see a couple of loose vertices here and if we wanted to fix that just click select those and hit the backspace all right now don't do control backspace just a simple backspace and that'll just delete vertices without deleting edges okay all right let's go ahead now and kind of really give some detail here in this chest okay so what do we want to do we want to add some just a little bit of volume um for the character so if i go to multi-cut right and so this is going to kind of teach you how to use a multi-cut tool and add some edge flow and control the edge flow where you want it so i'm now in x-ray mode and what I'm going to do is kind of cut underneath there and cut up and, uh, and through the arm, all right? So let's just go ahead and just click here. Actually, right here, start from the outside and then go into the line of symmetry. And then right click to exit the tool. And we're just going to kind of continue up here. Just kind of following the... The vertice or the edge flow here and i'm going to actually cut down to here so let's jump out of x-ray mode because again might look a little bit uh a little bit confusing okay so i'm gonna cu i'm cutting up here actually i'm gonna undo that and we'll start cutting here actually i'm gonna undo that here and i want to move this edge first so remove any cuts that you had previously and if I go ahead now and move this down a little bit, right underneath this kind of just chest muscle, as, and we're using that as a guide, all right? And I'm going to grab my multi-cut tool, and let's again just kind of start here. Thank you. And I'm going to multi-cut kind of from this center of the chest. Boom. So you can kind of see we're in there. Uh, right along that chest line and then we're going to just kind of route this edge up so how are we going to do that we're going to take this for kind of cut it across great and then cut this kind of in the center of this face and then cut there all right so we want to make sure to bring it to this vertice here because what we're essentially doing is we're manually cutting in an edge loop all right so i'm going to go up here and kind of stop there and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut this across the chest like so. Okay. So we have this vertice here, which we're going to uh, address here in a little bit. And I'm going to kind of move uh, some things around. And now that we have that, right, we can have a little bit more control over uh, this chest uh pectoral here again it we're not going for a huge bodybuilder or anything like that he's a, a young male so we're just going to use that to kind of help add in some some definition okay so i'll go ahead and now grab these vertices here like this the vertices that are the newly added vertices here and hold control w middle mouse and just kind of move those out on the normal just a little bit again he's skinny there's some anatomical bone structure and we're going to move that out and we're going to spread some of these vertices and i'm going to just adjust this curvature a bit and jump to the front view and you can see we can just kind of start following this a little bit more on our reference i'm just grabbing these outside vertices and you can kind of see which ones that i'm grabbing i'm just kind of grabbing these front facing ones here okay and i'm going to drag these in okay 
and quickly jump to x-ray. So you can see that this one is going to help really kind of push uh, some of this detail in. We have something like that. It's looking good. And then we'll go ahead now and bring this out as we're making our way up. So we're going to move these. So control middle mouse, just kind of drag these out. So now we're bringing the chest up a bit. And we'll just kind of, again, nothing too crazy. We're just giving, adding some differentiation here. And I'm going to move this one back, right? Because as you can see, the chest slopes back here, right? It slopes, slopes back. I have some torso reference here. Yeah, this, this one should be fine. Yeah, here it is. So we, you can go ahead and take a look. You can see how the chest kind of slopes back. Uh, it's not a perfect cube um, or perfect square, right? So the, the way the rib cage kind of sits uh, and then the spine kind of essentially S curves from the rib cage and then down to the pelvic area. And then this line here is that iliac crest that I was talking about. So we're going to jump to the side view again and just kind of make sure that we're really bringing these vertices back a bit. Just moving them back. Okay. Okay. So we're about here and we got that little bit of an indentation. We're going to move this one in just a bit. And again, just subtle vert vertex uh, maneuvering. And what I want to do actually with this vertice here is let's just go ahead and weld it here. So if you hold shift right click, you can grab the merge vertice tool. So I can go to merge vertices, then target weld. And I can grab this, click and drag and boom. It kind of does this um, weld or you can see it's right over here for target weld. All right. So. We went ahead and did that. And here's what you want to look for. You want to look for this nice clean edge that's running around. And at the same time, you want to make sure that all the faces that you have are nice quads. So we don't have any accidental open faces like this where you can see, oh, okay, everything's looking okay. Well, take a look at that. That's a huge face with a bunch of uh, vertices or a bunch of faces. So it's more than four sizes what I'm getting at. Okay, so we're kind of in this area here, and let's go ahead and move some of these vertices out. Um, sorry, when I say this area here, I'm talking about the shoulders. I know I need to kind of correct myself every now and then because uh, people aren't watching me live. So we'll just go going ahead and moving so again these verts around that shoulder area. Now, things look a little bit weird here. Now, we do have this quad uh, here. And still here, well, what I want to do actually is maybe kind of run this down the back here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of move this vertice closer to the shoulder and open this face up. So I'm going to grab this edge. So what I'm doing now, it's called routing edge loops, okay? I know it might look a little bit confusing, so just bear with me. Hopefully I'm going slow enough for you to, you know, kind of understand what I'm doing. But I want to delete this edge, right? Because this edge is going from kind of the, the pelvic area all the way up and kind of stops at the back of this shoulder. Well, I want to take it to the back here. So I'm going to take this face and instead of en ending it here, I'll go ahead and control backspace, remove that. Now I'm going to multi-cut this edge here that's open and move this back to our, our character, okay? And I'm going to just move him back. Maybe we'll just do a quick cut here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to address that in a second because the other thing that I want to do is continue this edge. So now we're kind of cutting across here. Okay. And I'm going to actually control. Oh, no, just keep left clicking. And then I'll click on this open face here. And then we'll kind of pin it there to this uh, edge here. And let me actually undo that. So I'll show you what I'm trying to do here real quick. 
So I'm going to take this edge, cut, cut, right there, and we're going to continue this one across like so. Okay, so we have that one, which is good. And for this one, I'm just going to take this one and just cut it down to the middle. We'll come back and clean that up because I'm going to need that for the head. All right, so don't worry about it. Uh, it happens all the time, no big deal. And then I'm going to take this edge here, this vertice that's kind of, uh, that stopped abruptly. This is what I'm talking about. Watch, see? One, two, three, four, five. We have five edges, essentially. One, two, three, four, five. And you want to make sure to address that as you go. If you don't, right, end gons are going to cause a lot of smoothing and issues for animations. Uh, the occasional triangle is fine in areas that don't deform, but you want to make sure to address those um, again as you're kind of moving along. And what I'm going to do is then take this edge now, right? Since we only have nine edges here, or sorry, eight edges, we can add another one for a little bit more geometry down the arm. All right, so I'm gonna actually select this. Here's that triangle. We actually want to remove it, right? Because now we have this, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a pole and that's an area of deformation. We definitely wanna address that. So let's go ahead and grab this, control backspace, delete that. And let's make some room for it, right? So again, I'll double click this edge here. Hold control or press W, control shift, and we're just going to move this back down a little bit. We're going to select that neighboring edge and do the same thing. Maybe select this open face here and just kind of move it down without having them too close to each other. And then I'm going to just, I said, I'm just making room, right? So there. So we've now got this nice area for this edge to run down. I'm going to grab my multi cut tool and. Oops, and I'm going to go ahead and hold control, middle mouse in the middle. Great. Now, before moving on, grab this one and again, move this on the normal. Don't just leave it here, right? You can see that it's not doing anything for the form. It's completely flat. So hold, press W, middle mouse drag. Boom, there you go. And I'm going to bring this guy down. He's just a little bit high. Maybe I'll check it in the side view and then multi cut. There. Okay, so we've we've gone ahead and done that. We now have some clean geometry running down the the length of the arm. Our chest has some more detail in it. I'm going to actually bring this guy, this vertice that's in the chest uh, a little bit. I'm going to bring it in. Here, I'm using control shift to move the vertices and just move that in just a little bit. Great. All right. I know this is not the most exciting type of modeling, but keep in mind, this is just basic edge flow modeling. Um, there are different ways like, you know, you can always create a base mesh, retopo, or do some sculpting, right? Uh, and then create a, something off of that, which I'll create some tutorials for that. But basic edge flow modeling, uh, poly modeling, and some, some cutting in, okay? So if we take a look at what we got so far, There. We're starting to get that uh, detail in on the character, and it's looking pretty good. So now we want to do the same thing. We just kind of want to come down to the uh, pelvic area, and we're going to want to add in some more detail, and cut in some more detail. Okay, so the thing about this is I'm just going to continue on, add some, add some geometry and add some edges you can see here right I'm not going to use the same technique uh, the primitives I think where we got a good base here so I'm going to scale this up move this back and scale this out just a bit and let's really do some work on this uh, this, this butt over here okay so kind of got that Go to our side, you kind of scale this back in, something like that. Good. And let's work. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is grab the multi cut tool and we're going to add an edge that just kind of runs down the middle here. Okay, so control middle mouse drag. Perfect. So we've added an edge here and now I want to add an edge that kind of runs in between this area here to kind of really help hold this area. Remember, we've added this V shape in here because you want to avoid just straight, you know, having this essentially be flat like this right and then extrude that out right we don't want that we want this nice shape because that's what you need for deformation okay and if we're going to be building clothes on top of it it'll just kind of all lay on top of the character okay so now that we have that we've added the edge here and i'll add this one control middle mouse so i've added that in the middle so now we're getting a little bit more geometry and topology which is great And I'm going to move this out. So this is going to be essentially the butt. And I'm going to move this vertice out as we're kind of going down. And you can see clearly we need a little bit more geometry in this area here. That's where we're lacking quite a bit. All right. So easy. So I can go ahead now. Actually, I'm going to move this vert out. And multi-cut, middle mouse drag. Great and grab these two vertices or these few vertices and I'm going to hold W and middle mouse drag. So now we're kind of moving this out. Okay. So it's coming out here. Don't worry. It's good. We're going to just start moving vertices uh, to kind of fix that and add some volume. Okay. So now we're adding volume in the butt area. Great. So I'm just kind of see that adding in some more detail and you can see I'm going to push this one in just a bit. The lower back area, push that back in. Move this up and we still need a bit more of geo. So I'm going to use kind of this a similar technique that I used up on the, the shoulder and back area. And what I'm going to do now is cut in an edge loop that's going to kind of route around and then back over here. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just start multi cutting again. So what I want to do is move this edge up here. We're going to make some room, move this edge down around the butt and I'm going to move this vertice in. We're just going to move this in just a bit here. Okay, so we got that going. We're just making some real estate because now I can go ahead. You can see exactly where I want to cut. And I'm going to just make this kind of U shape here. Okay, and you can see how I'm using this technique that's essentially cutting an inset inside our current edge flow. What I call this technique is just called localizing topology because now I can go ahead and hold control, you know, to cut here, middle mouse. And then we can go ahead, hit right click to end that one and then cut across here where now we got this for across this here, this, these sets of edges. Now see what that creates. This creates a triangle and an end gone. Whenever you have an end gone and a triangle, you can just simply weld this middle uh, edge here. So select this edge, hold shift, right click, merge collapse edges and merge edges to center and boom, there you go. Now we have all uh, squares here or all quads here and we can start continuing to work on the character. Okay, and we've now created edge flow and more topology in just the area that we want, which is the back side of the character, okay? This is what I mean by localizing topology. I didn't just go in here and add edges like this to give myself more edges, right? We don't need to do that, okay? So let's go ahead now and just do some cleanup, right? So we're gonna move these edges kind of now into place, spread these out a little bit so it makes uh, more sense. 
And when I mean more, when I say more sense, I mean, you know, an even distribution of edges. Okay. So I'm just using control shift middle mouse, just sliding these edges. And now I can go back to my uh, side view here and you can see I can start bringing in these uh, edges or these vertices in to add the form that was missing last time. So we're kind of essentially giving him kind of this round buttocks now. Okay, so that's looking good. Awesome, so I'm gonna just kind of space out these vertices again. And what I wanna do actually is this groin area is in need of another edge to kind of run down. So here and here, there's a bit too much space. So I wanna add an edge running down uh, here. And if I look at the edge loop here, it says I'm at uh, 18, so 19, or sorry, nine on each side. So what I wanna do, this is good, it's just add another multi-cut, control, middle mouse, add that in the middle. And I'm just gonna move this guy now, control, shift, and move this up a bit. You see how it's sliding and keeping it, keeping the good form there. And we're gonna do the same thing here. All right, so now what I'm making sure to evenly distribute the edges again. So we're just kind of going around. That's looking fine. And for our back now, if we take a look at our reference, see how it's kind of coming into the back, right? This is all those muscles, all that muscle and skin is attaching to that spine. So we want to make sure to give that same form here. If I select this vert, move up here, and now, till about here, about halfway up the, the upper back, and hold the press W, control, middle mouse. Let's drag that in. Okay, so that's looking good there. And what I can do now is route this ver this edge, I would say kind of down here. So we're gonna add this edge here, okay? We're gonna add an edge running down the length of the back. So we have this edge that was terminated previously. So I'm gonna delete that one. And I'm gonna add one that kind of runs down to about here. Okay. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is add in an edge that runs down the back. So I can connect this edge, great, at the top of the back. And then now I can go down to the butt and connect this, these two verts. All right, and now we're left with kind of this uh, triangle diamond thing, and we're definitely gonna wanna address that. So if I go back to my multi-cut tool, I can simply just cut this here. For one second. Actually, sorry, I meant to cut it from, instead of into the line of symmetry, I'm gonna multi-cut and then cut it down to the outside. Because now what that's gonna allow me to do is take this edge loop, right? So again, we're left with this uh, triangle and quad. Well, I can split this triangle and that's gonna give us uh, two quads. So I'm gonna go back, multi-cut, split this down the middle, and there we go. And if I move this over, you can see now we're left with three quads here. Um, so again, just some edge flow uh, multi-cut techniques that'll allow us to have some good clean topology for deformation. So now that again, I have this topology here, I can go ahead and start just moving these vertices and adding some volume. So I'm gonna grab these edges here, middle mouse, drag, move these up grab this vert and just essentially kind of space some things out. And I'll show you actually a one, one tool that'll help with that uh, quite a bit. And I'm going to grab the top ver vertice towards the upper back and towards the base of the butt, 
here. So if I grab the top and double click down here to the base of the butt, I can press W and move in a little bit, not that much, Middle control middle mouse drag, and just to get a little bit more form here uh, that we're looking from, that we noticed from our reference, okay? You can see this is exactly the form that we're going for, and you can see it starts to kind of go in towards the shoulder, comes out for the lats in the back, and goes in towards the spine. Great. Okay, so I can go back here and kind of moving these vertices around. And what I'm going to actually do is select these verts. Actually, I'm going to hold tab now and just kind of, uh, let's see, tab doesn't like to work. Ah, there we go. So just make sure you're in vertex mode selection. And I'm going to grab these vertices here and in vertex mode. I'm going to press shift right click and I'm going to average vertices and there you go. So average vertices, it's a bit strong. So average vertices and it's just going to space our space them out a bit and that's really flattening it out a bit. So I think I'm going to just do it one time. So it evenly spaces it out. So again, I just selected the bunch of vertices and then shift average vertices and average vertices again will evenly space out the vertices uh, between each other and then I can go back and just kind of middle mouse drag and add that volume back that I lost okay and let's check our side view boom looking pretty good so we're still matching our reference pretty well okay and just gonna Bring that in. All right, so I don't want to spend too much more time moving some vertices around, but you get the idea. And it's not, you know, going to be per perfect anatomy and everything, but it is going to give us a good base so we can start building the clothing on top of. So uh, shift right click on the mesh and I'm going to harden edge again. And there we go. Okay, and let me go ahead now and couple more things I need to do to these legs. They look like uh, very simple. Oh yeah, we got to give some form here to these calves. So I'm just control middle mouse dragging and you can see that now I can go in and essentially control middle mouse drag, add some volume and add some form. Okay, so adding some form here from the front. And what I want to do for these is grab kind of these back halves, or not back half, but back sets of verts here. And we're gonna middle mouse drag those, add some volumes for the calves, or the calves, there we go. That's good. And over, so you can see kind of what I'm doing there and press scale. I'm going to uniformly scale these out now. And we're just going to kind of just, again, manipulate some vertices to bring in that form from the front. Okay. And there. So I'm going to position these back. So we got that nice organic curve going back. Now, I still have to address some things here. Notice I can bring these ones back, these verts towards up the butt, right? So this is just kind of the technique. Honestly, it's it's not pretty really, you know, sculpting is a bit more exciting, but when it comes to poly and edge modeling, you know, this is the type of modeling that you would use for, you know, again, games or quick studios, if, if you had to build a base mesh uh, uh, from scratch and whatnot. All right. Now, the one thing I do want to bring up before going further is please, you know, spend some more time reviewing and checking your model from different angles. Um, make sure you look at it from like looking up, looking down, because guess what? You're going to start noticing some things you didn't notice before, like in this case. Right. Because this 
torso, the, this abdomen area is incredibly flat, right? So I can start bringing that in, um, these verts to kind of help that, address that area quite a bit. And that, that's going to help, right? Um, make sure you watch for dead edges and dead verts. So if I'm going around the, the mesh, you want to make sure like if there's areas that are really flat, uh, that aren't really adding to the form, you, you fix that as you go before adding in a lot more geometry, right? So you can see again, we kind of have this corner here and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of round that out just a bit, right? Keeping that good form and notice, see, look at this corner here, right? I'm looking at this area here, kind of running down. The other thing I can add now is, uh, a new material. So I'm going to hold right click, assign favorite material and just add a fong. And what the fong is going to do is now I can kind of go in and really take a look at some things. You know, we're going to ignore the butt. We can maybe come back. I can clean that later. Um, but we're starting to take a look at the highlights and the form of the mesh. And we want to make sure to fix things before going, um, you know, before going further, right? So again, kind of the, this pelvic area, I can really start to bring in again um, here. And what I want to do actually is maybe we can take a look at, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We're just creating a base mesh here. So I can maybe move this in a little bit, grab this edge that running runs down the length here and just kind of move that where it's a bit more organic, right? So this is the nice thing about not having a crazy amount of edges. I can contr really control the overall flow and form of my model with just kind of the few edges that I have uh, in here, right? Now, again, we want to make sure not to go too far off um, other reference and making sure that we, we keep the volume uh, where we need it, right? So I'm going to go back and maybe... Uh, increase the volume in th this thigh area here. Um, and that's looking pretty good. We haven't lost too much elsewhere. Uh, maybe I'll bump forward the, the, the knee here. But you get the idea, right? I'm just kind of going back and forth. And that's essentially what I'm going to do here. And just by doing that, again, you can see, right, that I'm really starting to add a lot of form to our, our character. I'm going to actually bump this in a bit. Like his abdomen now can really come in and not have to be too, too narrow, right? And we can bring out the back, right? Because that's this guy here, right? If you ever look, you can sometimes notice your lats and your back kind of coming from the back. Or you can see them coming out from the back. So something like this, right? And again, we're not building a bodybuilder by any means, but this is really going to help us nail down this form. Okay. And there, just by making adjustments, he's already again starting to look a bit more organic. And... Maybe some, something like that. All right. I think you guys have seen me push, pull, move some vertices around. Um, again, if I take a look at what we're referencing here, this is kind of what the ultimate goal is here. And we can kind of take a look and see that we have some some good geometry. Now, I'm, I'm we're definitely going to model hands and feet, um, but we're going to model gloves and, and, and feet for the sake of time on this tutorial. Um, so on the next one, we're just going to model the the hands and feet. And we'll go from there, okay? Hopefully you guys stuck around uh, long enough to see me get to this point. Uh, he's definitely looking a bit more refined. Um, and I'll probably do some cleanup in some areas. Um, but uh, all in all, uh, we're making some good progress and things are looking good. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks, guys.